Welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is Purendra Prasad. I teach in the Department of Sociology, University of Hyderabad. Today, we are going to talk about medicalization and pharmaceuticalization. What is medicalization? Medicalization is a process which brings everyday life into the medical domain and achieves a kind of hegemony over the people's lives. Across the world in the last few decades, medicalization has intensified for various reasons. Today, every, every part of our, uh, uh, you know, social living actually is being, you know, controlled, regulated, disciplined and brought into the control of the medical processes. If you look at a mother or parents who become very anxious if their child actually is not able to sit beyond 10 minutes, 5 minutes, then they think that there is a serious problem. And this has now been actually, you know, talked about as attention deficit syndrome. Similarly, somebody has bald head, it's a major medical problem. Somebody is short, that again you consult the doctor who probably would advise you to inject certain synthetic hormones and which is very very expensive but the procedures are all there. So baldness can be treated, shortness can be treated, children who are not able to study can be treated, housewives who spend lot of time at home, particularly in the kitchen get depressed and therefore that is actually a kitchen syndrome that also can be treated. So every part of human life actually is being brought under the medical surveillance and professional kind of supervision. And this medicalization process actually is because of the assumption that medicine can offer solution to anything under the sun. If you go to any doctor or a hospital, at no point of time you will be told that for this particular kind of a condition, we do not have an answer. Everything is actually accepted because medicine is supposed to provide solution to everything and this is one of the the uh, uh, the consequences of the modernization and in terms of the privileging of mind over body where a kind of Cartesian kind of a dualistic medicine actually which gave rise to positivism and positivist philosophy where medicine actually acquired the status of a, a kind of a demigod. So, in that sense, you know, all the concerns actually in day to day life are being actually effectively, okay, medicalized, okay. And this is what actually Ivan Illich in his book Limits to Medicine talked about how diseases actually are not simply the result of human kind of living and its uh, interaction with the environment and other things. A lot of diseases today are 
actually the result of the hospitals and hospitalization process itself. So, he talks about you know iatrogenesis meaning that doctor induced or hospital induced illnesses. These are all the consequences of medicalization. He talks about clinical iatrogenesis, social iatrogenesis, cultural iatrogenesis. At different levels, I think you have, you know, the wasteful use of the medical knowledge and resources, which is actually, you know, creating a, a kind of, uh, uh, you know, problem. Medicalization is seen as a natural kind of a phenomena because it is believed that there is solution to every problem. If you look closely for some kind of diseases, today doctors actually write what is called as UPO, meaning that unknown pathogenesis of its origin, meaning that they do not know as of now what is the origin of a particular pathogenesis. So, by that they do not actually restrict them in terms of not offering the medical solution, but there is a medical solution that is being provided. Okay. So, you have this kind of medicalization process with the positivist kind of uh, medical science or empirical science which can capture, can understand, can explain the cause of all diseases, can provide solution to all the diseases. In fact, if you look more closely, you have, you know, at different levels actually the kind of, uh, you know, the impact of medicalization on the human behavior. If a student does not attend classes for a particular number of days, he would immediately run to a doctor to get a certificate. Meaning that there are certifying agencies for our behavior. Okay. So, anything can be actually, you know, created through the medical supervision, medical kind of certification. All these processes are actually, you know, the, there is of course also a legal kind of embeddedment in terms of justifying and rationalizing these processes which is what actually is medicalization process. In fact, um, Michael Foucault who wrote extensively in terms of uh, understanding the, the human uh, um, psyche and also in terms of you know, understanding the relation between medicine, health and society through his book, Birth of the Clinic, History of Sexuality. He has clearly explained what is called as disciplinary power, meaning that hum the state actually is regulating the human population by disciplining them, by imposing certain kind of order and this is through the power that state actually wields on the individual and therefore today individuals do not have autonomy to actually you know express themselves and exercise their own freedom in different ways. Okay. If there is one child formula policy in China, two child policy in India. This is primarily because they, these human actually uh, uh, fertility can be regulated. 
so state has a legitimate legitimacy to use the power to actually enforce and this is done through the medicalization process so the entire discourse of family planning the way maternity health family health and child welfare all of this actually is designed in terms of disciplining the bodies okay and through disciplining the bodies society actually is being regulated to fall in place in terms of a particular order okay so the way we dress the way we speak the way you know uh, 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 our you know interaction between uh, uh, different groups of people everything is regulated and therefore i think uh, mary douglas and others actually talk about you know three types of body one is in terms of you know individualized body second one is in terms of body self or what is called as uh, 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 you know the politics of body and third one is the social body okay so when you look at the way you know your kind of uh, disciplining of the body regulates there is a dress code so when you attend certain kind of gatherings you are supposed to attend in a particular attire because that's what actually gives you recognition okay similarly in terms of uh, you know mapping on the social values of that are prevalent in the society on to the human body you know you say that actually the head actually governs the rest of the body and therefore we have head of the department head of the government because mind is supposed to govern the body body does not have the the cognitive sense it is mind which regulates okay so in that sense medicalization actually has moved in controlling regulating disciplining surveilling human bodies of at different levels okay so one could see okay in in today's context okay the the way you know uh, uh, a lot of uh, 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 you know social groups are being controlled how a particular kind of uh, uh, you know transgenders actually uh, uh, need to be treated how you know uh, uh, certain groups of people actually are to be brought into the into the clinical domain so there is uh, i think the literature actually talks about it as medical imperialism imposing certain ideological and certain kinds of you know domination okay into the societies so when you look at you know infertility for an example infertility earlier was actually left to religion because it was thought that it is god who actually you know is uh, 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 is the ultimate savior and therefore infertility did not have any solution today we religion is replaced by medicine and therefore i think when it is brought into the medical domain which is which actually there is a scientific explanation that has come in but to the extent that you know whether there is a solution to it or not you know the commercial interest actually on to the you know infertility issue has trivialized and made all the women actually you know to believe that it is only through medical intervention that you know children are born cesarean operation is another example where you know pregnancy is a natural state for any of the women's lives 
what is natural has been today uh, uh, you know translated into a you know very very controlled mechanism from the day one of the pregnancy women will have to be supervised by the medical professionals and all through okay the, the nine months actually the women are regulated controlled and despite all the regulatory kind of uh, uh, mechanisms in place more than 60 percentage of the women actually today cannot give birth you know normally they all they all have to undergo cesarean operation so it is something that you know the medicalization process actually has also you know captured the natural birthing process natural death processes everything is being regulated in the hospital settings okay so in fact if there is actually a perfect baby or if you are looking for a perfect baby then it, you need to actually you know uh, uh, approach the medical uh, uh, kind of a domain because it is the doctors or the medical professionals who can actually you know contribute to the production of perfect or the ideal babies okay so the, this is because you are actually directed in terms of how a a kind of uh, you know a, a a kind of regular kind of thing or normal kind of a thing can be produced through medicine not in terms of you know everyday kind of life situations so what one is trying to talk about is that pregnancy birthing process infertility children's education all kinds of things are brought under the domain of medicine this is where i think you know david armstrong actually says that medicine lost its power the moment it actually started articulating that it can cure all diseases it has power to actually provide causative kind of a logic to every disease so what it does is that it actually brought non medical events into the medical domain and through which actually it, uh, it is regulating and controlling the human population and their lives pharmaceuticalization again pharmaceuticalization is a process where you make actually people believe that their capabilities and their abilities can be enhanced can be improved can be managed through the pharmaceutical active agents so in a sense there is solution to every thing okay as i said you know baldness can be treated and you can be you know made to believe that you are normal obesity can be treated and you can be you know normal okay every set of condition actually is brought into the domain of you know pharmaceutical kind of a control so pharmaceuticalization process actually has also made people to actually depend for every simple kind of you know problem if you have actually you know less sleep or you know certain kind of behavior during sleep you know it all that need to be brought into the into the pharma control and therefore you have you know medicines that are available for sleeplessness for uh, all kinds of things that are being you know offered so the way you know modern medicine actually has uh, given rise to these processes of medicalization and pharmaceuticalization has 
not only in terms of established power domination and hegemony over the human uh, uh, bodies but it is also trying to influence the natural kind of a food and other kind of uh, uh, mechanisms actually uh, uh, you know into its fold if you look at today ayurvedic medicine which is being increasingly you know brought under the kind of medicalization processes where ayurvedic medicine need to be standardized standard pharmacopoeia need to be you know discovered so that it can be you know marketed exactly like the allopathic medicines so what we are saying is there are two dimensions here one is you know the way medicalization and pharmaceuticalization has you know brought you know all the dimensions of human behavior into the into the medical domain so the irrational kind of you know uh, uh, um irrational ways of actually incorporating everything into the medical domain is one dimension of it but what is much more uh, uh, you know uh, uh, dangerous is that the commercialization dimension of it the way the commercial dimensions of medicalization and commercial dimension of pharmaceuticalization has actually led actually to a false kind of hope that everything can be treated by the medicines hospitals doctors and the pharma companies and this is a new kind of a dependency where uh, uh, you know what uh, scholars talk about medical imperialism you know absolute control over the human life has been established through these concepts of medicalization and pharmaceuticalization i think uh, a lot of scholars um, you know starting from ivan elich to michael fuko david armstrong and uh, several other scholars actually have written how the inappropriate use of technologies inappropriate use of uh, you know uh, medicines and the way they are actually prescribed for ailments which are not actually necessary has only made actually the uh, 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 human lives much more miserable much more dangerous uh, in the name of scientific rational and you know systematic kind of a scientific method yeah. let me sum up this module in modern society there is higher kind of a risk vulnerability that has been perpetuated by the processes of medicalization and pharmaceuticalization this is primarily because medicine actually gave a kind of a hope that everything from birth to death can be controlled can be regulated by the medical kind of processes and that's the reason why we do not have today any more you know pregnancies actually managed in a natural uh, uh, and in a environment which is more socially acceptable you do not have the different size shape and different abilities of bodies in uh, in its own kind of way but these processes have, have actually been you know medicalized it's not only in terms of you know providing unnecessary kind of drugs surgeries procedures etc but also it is actually regulating the society and social behavior to the extent that you know human beings are made to believe 
that there is something called normalcy or normality. So, the ideal typical body is being actually presented and effort is to achieve this ideal typical body and medicine actually is the only uh, mediation through which everybody can actually become you know a fit body or a normal body or a healthy body. Increasingly marginalizing and excluding a lot of diverse kind of practices that are available and diverse kind of bodily images and bodily kind of uh, schema that is available is being actually ridiculed, being you know uh, uh, undermined. These are the consequences of medicalization and pharmaceuticalization and the commercialization dimension of course takes it to a new level where medical imperialism actually operates in terms of controlling the human bodies and also providing medicines only for the privileged and the affordable kind of groups of uh, people. So, th this is where I think uh, sociology can help understand how you know the, the kind of uh, you know uh, um, transformation or the, the change in ideas of bodies of the, the solutions to certain set of problems actually are being you know uh, uh, offered in today's society and uh, in that sense okay, uh, sociology actually helps us to understand the deeper meanings and the underlying kind of power relations that contribute to medicalization and pharmaceuticalization. Thank you.